Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Ian Roth. And I'm Tracy McRae. Sepsis is the body's extreme response to an infection. It can be life-threatening, and without timely treatment, sepsis can rapidly cause tissue damage, organ failure, even death. Sepsis happens when an infection you already have in your skin, your lungs, your urinary tract, or somewhere else, triggers a chain reaction throughout your body. Wow. Anyone can develop sepsis, but it's most common and most dangerous in older adults or those with weakened immune systems. And here to discuss is Mayo Clinic pulmonologist and critical care specialist, Dr. Alice Gallo. Welcome back to the program. It's great to see you again, Dr. Hi. Gallo. Thank you for having me again. So explain uh, what's happening with sepsis and why do older people get it more often? Okay. So very good question. So what happens in sepsis is our body always will try to fight an infection. For people to develop sepsis means that the body kind of overreacted to it, which is very common in elderly, actually, and people with weakened immune systems, so people who are getting chemo, people who are getting um, steroids for other diseases, and actually very common in babies, too. So what happens is it's just the body overreacts, and for some reason, with that, the organs start failing, other organs start failing afterwards. What kind of symptoms would you normally see with sepsis? So sepsis, you would see high fever, so above 38.3 Celsius or above 100.4 Fahrenheit. Your heart rate, your heart starts racing, so heart rate above 100, 110. And you also start getting, uh, your breathing gets really uh, fast, so above 22 breaths per minute, which is, which is very high. Is this is sepsis the same thing as septic shock? So no. So septic shock is kind of like the next level of sepsis. Usually if someone comes into the hospital with sepsis, we give them fluids, so IV fluids to rehydrate them, and people usually get better. The ones that don't get better need extra medication to keep the heart pumping and the blood pressure up, and that's when septic that's when we call them septic shock when they need extra medications to keep their blood pressure up. Those medications are called vasopressors. How, how would you diagnose sepsis? Because those symptoms sound like they could be associated with a lot of other things. That's a great question. Any infection could actually cause that. But then when people start getting their blood pressure low, um, when they start getting outer mental status, so a family member will usually say, my mom was pretty sharp until this morning, and then all of a sudden she is not making sense, so that's pretty common. When they stop making urine or make less urine, so that tells us that the kidneys are failing, um, so th that's when we, are like, we think that sepsis, because it makes us think that the other organs are failing. Is that why I've only ever heard of septic shock and not sepsis? Because it could end up being a lot of different things, mm -hmm. and it usually goes undiagnosed until you're at septic shock. Very likely. Uh -huh. So usually, usually people who just need the hospital, they are in sepsis. But if they need us in the ICU, they're likely in septic shock, and they need extra intervention, so extra medications, not only the antibiotics that we use to treat the infection. So how, how common is sepsis? So it's around 200,000 cases in the U.S. per year. So it's pretty common. It's, m like I said before, most common in kids and elderly, so older than 65, and also patients any age that have a, a weakened immune system for whatever reason. How many, it's, that's a pretty high number, mm -hmm. how often do you have patients with sepsis? Is it at least once a week or? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a daily a thing daily that we thing. see in the ICU. It's a, it's a daily disease that we see in the ICU, probably two or three a day in the ICU. So it would make sense to me that if a person is in the ICU and has sepsis versus someone who is at home with their family or something else is going on, does it develop really rapidly or? Yeah, it's, it's usually hours. It's very quickly. It's an hour to two and, and it can develop very quickly, yeah. So what's the treatment? So treatment, you always have to treat the underlying infection. So like you said, if it's a pneumonia, you, you give antibiotics to treat the pneumonia. Um, so usually treat the underlying um, infection and also make sure that you are preventing the other organs from failing. So we give the fluids to prevent the kidneys from shut down. We give the, the pressors, the medication to keep the blood pressure up so blood flow continues to go to the brain, continues to go to the other organs. So kind of like damage control after they already developed sepsis, septic shock. I mean, it sounds like a pretty frightening thing that anybody would want to prevent. What can people do to prevent sepsis? So, so very good question. So like you said, any infection, and we have some, some bacteria in our skin that can actually cause sepsis if you get a cut. So make sure you're always washing your hands. 
Um, make sure that, that you, you get your annual check with your primary. Make sure that, that you don't need any of those immunosuppressants medications. So basically it's hygiene, hand hygiene. It, what's your typical sepsis patient if this is happening at least once a day, what typically happens? And what is the timeline of it if it goes so quickly? How, tell me those two things. Okay, it's, very, it's a very good question. So typical patient is 65, 70 years old, men and women equally affected. And usually they came into the hospital because they had pneumonia, they had a urinary tract infection. And despite receiving IV fluids, so usually we do around um, three liters roughly, uh, of IV fluids and their blood pressure still is lower than normal. So the, the high pressure lower than 90 normally. Usually a couple of hours we can see that happening because we need to give those fluids in within an hour and then they come to the ICU. After that, then we just have to make sure that we give the extra medications to keep their blood pressure up. If what's happening is your organs start to shut down, yes. if you go into septic shock, mm -hmm. um, if you can stop that and and you know it's put the brakes on it mm -hmm. how or why is it not happening again then it, it just that they, they get rid of the infection or the bacteria is gone it would just seem like if your body is at a state where that can happen that it would happen again relatively quickly so what happens is we can control the the successful cases we have is because we were able to control the initial infection mm -hmm. so mainly good antibiotics good antibiotic stewardship we work very closely with our pharmacists here at Mayo to make sure that we're doing good antibiotic stewardship. Um, so it's really early antibiotics, early fluids, and... But there are eye. infections now that antibiotics are not able to help with. Is sepsis one of those areas? Because there's some, we're starting to hear these stories about, you know, the person had infection, they were given antibiotics, and the antibiotics didn't work because of antibiotic resistance. Is that trouble in the world of sepsis absolutely so that's one of because of we are using antibiotics so much in the outpatient setting we are creating a lot of resistant bacteria to our regular antibiotics so what we do then when they come in with sepsis and they need an icu we kind of give them antibiotics that will cover basically any bug that is out there and then once we start getting results back of of blood cultures or or phlegm we we check the phlegm to see what bacteria we're dealing with then we start narrowing it down so we can do continue like to do um, good antibiotic stewardship. If, if I have a, a parent or a grandparent or a relative I come into the hospital with and, and the doctor comes out and tells us that they have sepsis now, how worried should I be at that point? So if it's, if it's just sepsis and is within an hour, you have to be worried because they're sick, but not overly worried. If you hear the word septic shock, the combination of words septic shock, then, then it's worrisome. Hmm. Any more questions? All right. We've been talking about sepsis with Dr. Alice Gallo, a pulmonologist and critical care specialist at Mayo Clinic. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.